This video is about Botox for scarring, and I think that's one of those confusing things because you probably are associated thinking Botox is great for wrinkles to reduce them for a few months and then they go away. Why would I talk about scarring? So first I'll talk a little bit about clinical evidence of why Botox is very powerful for scarring, what types of scars it works for, how long it lasts, what I'm trying to achieve with the, that therapy. So first of all, they did a double-blind prospective placebo-randomized controlled split scar evaluation following thyroidectomy. So after thyroid was removed from the, from the neck, the incision was treated half with saline, which is salt water, that's placebo, and the other half was done with Botox at a week following the treatment. It was double-blind, in other words, the patient didn't know, the doctor didn't know, and six months later, they looked at which side looked better, and the Botox side looked substantially harder to see and much better for both the patient and the physician. So Botox is powerful at healing scar. I know the question is, does it last long? Does it, does it work? How does it work? And all those things. So first of all, I don't know how it works, but Botox heals the skin dramatically well. Think about someone that's doing Botox. If you're doing Botox, look at the area you get Botox. Not only do you probably have fewer wrinkles, but also the quality of skin looks so much better from pores, texture, tone, everything. Botox heals the skin very well. If you look at my video that's about 25 minutes long on mesobotox, you'll hear more philosophy about how Botox really works to heal tissue. So Botox also works to molecularly heal scar tissue. And that's a very, very important thing you need to understand. When would be the best time to treat a scar? Ideally, it would be either at the time of the injury. injury. So like, for example, uh, to this morning, I did a, a lady that I did a mole removal on her nose, and I actually injected her, her scars with Botox. So if it's a facelift or a rhinoplasty, those are areas I typically don't inject with Botox because those, those heal so well. But if it's a mole or a scar revision or something where it's sitting in the middle of the face, I almost, almost always inject a little Botox at the time of the surgery. If you have an injury like you you fell and there's a big gash on your face, I would actually encourage to have your doctor inject some dilute Botox in there. It doesn't matter how many units, just even a few units will really help modulate the scar. But if you don't do it at the time of the surgery or at the time of the in injury, you could do it at a week, you could do it a month, you could do it any time. The earlier you do it, the better the modulation. So classically, as I mentioned in that study, the, the injection was done at a week. Um, and, but it can, I've seen Botox modulating scars even years after the fact. I don't think it's as powerful if you wait a long time. It's better if you do it earlier. But Botox works very, very well to manage scar tissue. How does it do it? Again, it's not clear, but Botox really molecularly heals it. So what kind of results am I looking at with Botox for scar tissue? I'm looking for the quality of skin, the redness, the texture, the pores, the tone, the depth. Um, the, the thickness, all of these things can be improved with Botox. What scars would really not do well with Botox? So a couple examples, one would be a very, very thick scar to the point where it's actually keloid. A keloid is a whole different thing. You can look at some of my videos on keloids. Keloid is a totally different animal. They probably will improve it, but if someone's got a really big, like a big, big keloid, the best treatment for that is gonna be probably excision plus radiation, and that's a whole different video. I encourage you to watch some of my videos on keloids. Hypertrophy scars means it's just a little bit thicker than ideal. If it's a little bit thicker, I usually go a different route. I usually use 5 or uracil and um, di very dilute steroid to manage that situation, but the problem with that, it's not risk-free. Sometimes it leads to some pigmentation change, especially in darker skin patients. It may last a few months. Uh, sometimes it can over um, soften it, but usually not. That's why I use the dilute steroid. Uh, with the Botox, uh, it's something that I can do in lieu of the 5-FU or it can be done in conjunction. Of course, the best results are in conjunction with it. How much do I need to put, a, put in there? Believe it or not, it can be very low dose of Botox. Um, it very even small amount can make a difference and it's the, really the placement of the Botox place intradermally that's the key. Is there any risk to Botox? Not really long term, but short term, if you're placing it in a scar that's in the mid cheek area, there's a tiny chance for six weeks your smile could be either asymmetric or slightly off. Um, in my opinion, that's really worth it, and I don't see that very often in the in the how little I put into the zone and, and placed correctly. How often do you need to do this uh, treatment? I would recommend every three to four months, uh, and usually most people are doing it between two to five sessions. And the great thing is that over a few times, you really don't need very much, and, it, and um, that's natural. 
What if there's a scar in the forehead? Believe it or not, the forehead, if you just do your standard Botox dosing in your forehead, usually it manages the scar. So the reason is also in the area, if the area is not moving much, the scar will heal better. So if there's a scar in the forehead, I do a, a normal concentration of regular Botox and I go back and add a little Botox into the area. And man, sometimes with that, I can get it treated with one to two rounds because I'm combining the dilute Botox, focus on the scar, and a larger area of concentrated Botox that I usually use for muscle treatments, and I see very quick results with that. Um, the, so the, what is the interval of treatment? As I said, every three to four months until you don't need to do it, and that's very powerful. How about atrophy scars? In other words, scars that are depressed. You can listen to some videos that I've done on acne scarring. It actually works on an atrophic scar. It builds up collagen, but really deep atro atrophic scars need microsilicone injections, RF microneedle, other therapies to improve it. But just mild at atrophy, it can actually heal that area. How about discoloration? It can actually cause improvement in discoloration. Usually it doesn't happen with the first treatment. It may take a couple rounds to do that. But Botox for scarring is a very powerful adjunct in therapy. Why have you never heard of it? Why does your doctor think not doesn't even heard of this. Most doctors are not really as passionate and focused on what Botox can do to heal the skin, but it's very powerful. Natural question is how long is it going to last? Is it just going to go away in a few months? Absolutely not. This is a deep remodulation of scar tissue, which I really believe is permanent, meaning that, of course, as you get older, if scar tissue was something that you know, wrinkles developed on it and it got older, you could do it in a few years again. But once I've built it a few rounds, you really don't need to continue doing this. This is just a preventative treatment and an and a interventional therapy for scar tissue. So are you a good candidate for that? You really have to see your doctor or me in person to really take a look at that to, to make a decision about this. What kind of scars? How about like post-abdominal uh, plasty, tummy tuck, breast lift scars? It heals great, so much better because body scars heal poorly um, compared to the face. And this treatment with the Botox is a powerful adjunct. I've done great um, w treating those areas. Now, I don't do body surgery. I only treat other people's scars. So those areas can do very well with Botox. Um, is there much recovery? Usually not a lot of bruising or swelling, but mild. I, I, I'm, because scar tissue is a little bit uncomfortable, I usually like to use some numbing cream for 30, 45 minutes. There's still some discomfort. Usually the first time the scar is more sensitive, and then over time it has less and less discomfort. So hopefully this video on Botox for scars is helpful to understand this type of treatment that I perform.